Welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of WebPixel. And today I wanted to chat a little bit about dome ports. Now, here we are, dome ports. So, one of the most frequently asked questions on the WebPixel forum revolves around the choice of dome ports, size of the dome ports, and the issues regarding dome ports. So, I thought it'd be wise to address these. Now, um, I'm going to address them in terms of um, using a full frame digital SLR. So um, my, my major experience is with Sony and Nikon, uh, sorry, it's with Nikon and Canon SLRs, um, but in general, um, you can choose any brand, but we're talking about those that have a 35 millimeter or a full frame sensor. And my reason for doing this is that the problems that dome ports generate are particularly acute with full frame sensors. That's not to say that they don't occur with smaller sensors, they do, but they're less acute and they're less marked. So in many ways, the, the problems that you will talk about in terms of full frame sensors, you can apply them to smaller sensors in order to get um, an idea of of how to deal with these problems. So what are the optical problems with a, a dome port? Well, it's very easy at this point to get bog, bogged down in a terrible morass of optical theory and equations and goodness knows what. I promise you no equations. I have got two diagrams, so please bear with me. Um, and essentially, um, but we need to talk a little bit about what dome ports do. And bear in mind that we use dome ports for primarily for wide angle underwater imagery. So when we take a dome, um, obviously if we look at it in profile, um, there we are, you can see, um, this allows the light to enter from a very broad range of angles. If you were to imagine a flat port, a flat port basically does not allow the same. So if we use a flat port with a wide angle lens, even if the coverage works, which it may or may not, depending on how wide the lens is, um, you will end up with a great deal of distortion as the light goes through the lens, uh, goes through the port, sorry, and then into the lens. And this results in all sorts of nasty optical phenomena, which we want to avoid. So the dome port allows the light to enter a relatively straight angle. But, and to be fair, we have the same problem with, with flat ports, but it's not as acute. The issue we also have is that when we take a dome port underwater, the Inside the dome port, this bit is hopefully air filled, um, and obviously the outside is in contact with the water. So that produces an optical effect. So effectively, the dome port acts as a lens. Um, and this is a very important thing to get our heads around in that when we take a picture using a dome port, um, at the surface, if we look through the camera viewfinder, if you look through this here, like this, um, there you go, there's me it's all very straightforward. Underwater, that's not what's happening. The, ca the, the dome port itself is creating a virtual image in front of itself, and the camera is then focusing and taking a picture of that virtual image. So, and this is the diagram that I mentioned. I did warn you about it. Here we have two different size dome ports, um, obviously one larger, one smaller. And in front of them, you can see what the, it is projected to be the virtual image. Um, and the first thing you should really notice is that the curvature of the bigger dome is less than the curvature of the smaller dome. So what that means is that the virtual image in both cases is curved, but it's less curved with the bigger dome. Um, there's another way of achieving the same thing, and this is my second diagram, I did warn you there were going to be two, and that would be to use a flatter section of dome port. So rather than um, to take a big dome, a big glass dome, and cut a section out of it. And again, that reduces the curvature of the virtual image simply because the actual glass that you're putting into the dome is smaller. So if we compare the two dome ports very crudely here, so here we have uh, a nine inch port, Superdome, Seacam Superdome. You can see the curvature on that. I'll try and get it in focus if I do it like that. There we go. And we'll compare it with the curvature on this um, fisheye port. Again, Seacam fisheye port. You can see that the actual amount of curvature is much, much greater on the smaller dome than it is on the bigger dome. Why is that relevant? Well, this is a little bit of optical theory that I was afraid I, um, that, that I was going to have to, I can't get around trying to explain. Um, 
our camera sensors are all flat, straight, they're not curved. So when the, vert when the camera tries to um, take a picture of a curved image, essentially the camera will normally focus pretty well on the center of the dome. So there's no problem with focus. Okay, you can move the focus point around, but generally towards the center of the frame, the, the, the camera has no problem because the light is entering in a relatively flat, parallel way. However, when you go to the corners, the corners now are much closer than the center. So what that means is that we now have a depth of field issue. So there's not, or, or there may not be sufficient depth of field to get the center of the virtual image and the corners in focus at the same time. And this is why, um, in general, um, we find that particularly with full frame cameras, we may need to use our depth of field, i.e. our aperture settings, in order to achieve um, sharp corners and a sharp center of the image. All right, now, having said that, we have, broadly speaking, two different types of lens that we use um, underwater. And the first, this is an example of it, this is a fisheye, or an image produced with a fisheye lens. So what does a fisheye lens do? Fisheyes are very, very wide. They can be up to 180 degrees um, field of view. Um, and so they're very, very wide, um, but, what the, the way they achieve some of that wideness is by producing a great deal of barrel distortion. So there is deliberately introduced forced perspective. So effectively, the lens itself distorts. And if you try and shoot straight lines with the fisheye, um, they will appear curved. Now, that may or may not be something that you can deal with creatively. That's entirely a creative decision. Um, but um, in many ways, because we don't deal with a lot of straight lines underwater, um, fish eyes are a very effective lens to use underwater, and one that most people use a fair amount of the time. The good news in terms of dome ports is that the because of the barrel distortion, we tend to not notice what's going on in the corners as much as we would otherwise. So what we can do with a fisheye lens is we can often get by with a much smaller dome port, i.e. more curved virtual image, than we could with other types of lenses. So for example, this is a um, seven inch um, port. Um, this is a, a Seacam compact port, it's called CP port. Um, but there are lots of other manufacturers that make them. Most manufacturers have them in their arsenal. And in general, for using on a full frame camera, um, that's pretty acceptable for using the fisheye lenses. It produces a pretty good result. Um, I would suggest at the um, very open apertures, so f4, f5, f6, um, round about 5.6, um, it starts to, the, the optical quality starts degrading quite badly, but down to around about those kinds of apertures, um, in general, smaller dome ports, so six, seven inch dome ports, probably seven inch minimum, are an effective tool. Now, of course, um, can you use a small dome port? Yes, you can, but you will end up with problems in the corners. So um, this is why um, this is this is generally uh, um, you want to watch your corners with a fish island on full frame uh, with a seven inch dome, but generally they'll be acceptable. Smaller, yeah, you're going to start bumping into problems. Now, creatively, of course, there may be things you can do about that. And to be fair, if you're shooting big animals in blue water, where all you've got in the corner is blue water, does it matter? No, you're not gonna see the distortion. You're not gonna see the softness in the corners. Um, and it should also point out the softness in the corners, it depends on what you want to use the images for. It depends on your own creative feelings about whether it's acceptable or not. There was a fantastic image that, that won one of the underwater categories a few years ago on, on Wildlife Talk of the Year that was horribly soft in the corners, but it captured an amazing moment. And, you know, it was awarded Underwater, it was the underwater image um, in Wildlife Talk for the Year. So um, personally, I found the softness was a distraction, but that's because I'm a photographer and look for these things. The majority of people probably wouldn't see it. So these are all personal decisions. So with fish eyes, generally on full frame, we can get away with um, seven inch ports, smaller ports. Um, and of course, smaller ports are cheaper, they're lighter to travel with. Um, in general, they're easier to move around the water. Um, there's lots of advantage to smaller ports. By contrast, 
if we move away from fish eye lenses for a moment and talk about rectilinear wide angle lenses, a rectilinear wide angle lenses, as far as possible, present a rectilinear, so a straight image uh, rather than a curved image. There is um, the better lenses have minimal amount of distortion in them. So in general, they reflect the true wide angle nature of the scene. And this is really where we start bumping into significant problems, uh, particularly on full frame. Now, having said that, if you take a big dome, 230mm dome, and you always shoot at f11+, plus, maybe f13+, plus, you'll never have a problem. If you're fortunate enough to live somewhere which has really clear blue water and that's the only place you dive in, you won't have a problem. Um, however, for most of us, at some point, um, we'll find that those parameters are starting to become a problem, or traveling with a big dome port is becoming a difficult problem because they're heavy and bulky, or expensive, or all of the above. So this is why um, our port selection for rectilinear wide angle becomes um, much more difficult. Um, I would say that with the um, both Nikon and Canon rectilinear wide angle lenses, the best lenses that I've found on full frame um, cameras is their 16 to 35 um, rectilinear wide angles. Um, the Nikon one is an f4. I'm not sure what the Canon one is, like a 3.5. Anyway, um, they both work pretty well um, behind a dome, but in both cases, they benefit from, well, the short answer is the bigger dome you have, the better the optical quality. This is true with that. It's probably worth emphasizing that earlier, really, is if you compare a six inch dome and a seven inch dome and an eight inch dome, nine inch dome, as the dome gets bigger, your optical quality will improve. So there's no shortcut to this. You, there is no sweet spot where you can get a particular dome, particular dome size that's going to produce better. The bigger it is, the better it will work. And that's that's obviously shown here. I've got two images. The first one is um, a relatively um, big aperture, and you can see if we zoom in, there we go. You can see the corners are pretty soft and nasty. Whereas here we have a similar image where I've managed to maintain a um, a much more closed aperture and the, full, the depth of field has sorted the corners out and I've got much better definition of the corners. So um, this is really what we're after. The short answer is that if you're selecting a dome port for rectilinear wide angle on full frame, you really want to go with eight inch minimum, probably nine inch in order to get the best results. So I think that's 200 and 230 mil respectively, if we go to metric. Um, and those are the ones will get you the best results. Now, the other thing that we should probably mention, and it's not specifically related to dome ports, but um, the position of the lens inside the dome port and the camera and the housing is actually critical too. Um, and this is very, very important that you get that, that figured out and it may involve the use of extensions in order to extend the dome port away from the housing body. Um, this is really, really critical. A mislocated um, dome port relative to the lens is is easy, is hard to rectify. And unfortunately, it's not simply a question of, of looking through the dome port and trying to see where the lens sits. Um, it's actually significantly more complicated than that. The best advice I can give here is go to the manufacturer, consult the manufacturer's um, specs. Most manufacturers now, in fact, all the ones I can think of have port charts, which will give you their recommendations. And these recommendations are largely based on in-water testing with the dome ports. So, um, you know, this is not something they've dreamed up. They've actually sat down, got in the water, tried different lengths of extension, and gone with the one that works best. Um, so really, really important that when you're shooting wide angle lenses, consult the port charts, look at the lens you're planning to use, and um, use an appropriate extension. Obviously, if you're using some very esoteric lens combination, this is something you may need to test for yourself, which can be a challenge. And that will be a question of getting in somewhere where you can get in the water, um, shooting a series of images with different extensions, and figuring out which one works best. So, I mean, that's ultimately the, the process. But um, again, it can be a challenging process. So there's a few thoughts about dome ports. I hope it hasn't been too technical and too, I've tried to keep it in more general terms. Um, but obviously, um, it is a huge subject. So if you'd like to know more, please write some um, some um, some comments in the suggestions. Um, and if there are answers, I'll try and answer them in a future episode. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsor of today's episode, which is Seacamp.
um, and we'd like to thank you very much. Um, please, if you enjoyed this video, please like it. Um, and of course, um, feel free to subscribe to the Webpixel Live channel and that'll keep you notified when we have um, additional um, episodes in the future. Thank you very much and I look forward to seeing you again soon.